Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're back with another episode of uh, OTB Live. This is episode 41. This is the uh, the Oscar post show, Oscar review show. Yeah, man, 90, 90 years of white motherfuckers giving other white motherfuckers <laughs> Running awards. Running that shit. Running that shit. Um, yo, I got a lot to talk about tonight, man. We're going to get to the top. Do it. Yeah, man, we gotta, we're got we going to get to the top 10 independent albums uh, in the country. We're also going to talk about the winners, the losers, the snubs, the fashion, everything that was the uh, 90th annual Academy Awards, a.k.a. the 90th Oscars. I just want to say this real quick. This was the... The most entertaining, well balanced. Yo, it I was really, really it. good. It was good. I'm glad it wasn't just the weed. I'm glad it wasn't just me. Yo, I actually watched it. I actually watched it at my parents' house. Now, usually I go up to um, the Crown Plaza in White Plains and watch all the award shows because mm. you meet people from out of town that's just there at the bar right, chilling out. Right, 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 right. Like, I get to meet so many people. I made so many connections at the Crown Plaza. Shout out to, uh, oh man, I can't think of his name. Oh, Brett James. Shout out to Brett James. Okay. Um, he's been here in the studio before. He's done a couple of shows. Um, and uh, <laughs> my man Wolverine. I, I can't think of it. Was... Hugh Jackman. No, 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 no. It's a dude who used to work. He used to work at uh, uh, Black Bear, Wicked Wolf, and uh, Thirsty Turtle. Okay. And he always had the mutton chops. Oh, I see. And he always, he always dressed up as, as fucking Wolverine. because he jacket. Looked, he's, he always dressed up as Wolverine. Didn't even have to be Halloween. Nah, he did it on Halloween. One year, him and him and uh, Frankie K, the clothing designer, did the ambiguously gay duo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They did that. They did that one year. Um, but um, yo, last night's award show was dope. I didn't go up to Crown Plaza. Shout out to Brett James, the manager at the Crown Plaza. Um, I actually watched it with my. My mom, my dad, mm -hmm. my my dad like bowed out gracefully, like in the middle. He was like, "Yeah, I'm going to bed." Yeah, I can't handle this. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Fair. it was me, my mom, uh, Naya. Shout out to Naya, and my my son was knocked out for most of it. Mm -hmm. And then like around ten thirty, eleven o'clock, he popped up and was like, "Hey!" and started running around. I was like, "Ah!" I was like me as a kid for New Year's. Oh yeah, fall asleep yeah, before, yeah. and then it'd be like twelve ten. Like, hey, what I miss? What what's going on? Yeah, yeah man. But, um, yo, my week, um, I celebrated my birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy birthday, oh, man. That's thanks, right. Man. I saw yeah, it, yeah, I saw yeah, it yeah, on yeah. Facebook. That's right. Because people Ooh. can't remember each other's birthdays if it's not on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yo, I... How'd it go? Yo, Thursday night. Now, I stopped drinking on the 28th. As of who and when and what? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done, man. Why? I, what happened? Yo, dude, what, I'm, what I'm back in. What did you? Uh, I'm back in. Wake I'm up back it. on on the kick. I'm I'm eating good. I'm exercising. Okay. You know what scared the shit out of me? What, what's that? That Kevin, rib that was stuck right. Right. Nah, oh, bro. Okay. Kevin Smith, man. Shout out to Kevin Smith, the, the director. Uh, director. Okay. He had a massive heart attack mm. on the 26. Yep. The dude is only 47 years old. Right. And he had a hundred percent blockage. Of his fucking right, like, uh, Artery, not, uh, yeah, yeah, one of the small, one of the, the arteries. Yeah. And he fucking, like, they had to cut into his groin and go up into his heart what? and put a fucking stint in it. He's what? 47. And he just lost 85 pounds. Well, speaking of health, losing weight, and, and having a heart attack, I don't know if this is what he had, but Rick Ross. Oh, yeah, Rick Ross. That's he another. Died. No, I just I just, I just, just posted that. I was just like, people are asking me why I stopped drinking, why am I back in the gym. Like, And I'm like, yo, dude, I want to live. Like, Rick yeah. Ross lost all that weight. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what kind of drugs he stopped doing. Like, I don't know if he was ever I like think doing. He was, I think he was doing a lot of. Uh, was he doing a codeine? Yeah, I think he was on that lean shit for a little while. That was causing him to have seizures like uh, right, like Wayne. Like Wayne. Yeah. Like I, And I can't play with the shit because I am epileptic. Yeah. So Plus, you just shouldn't be drinking fucking... Yeah, codeine. Pro Promethazine or whatever the fuck. <laughs> what the fuck were you... Pro I didn't like cough syrup yeah. as a child. Why right. would I, I, why would I drink it? As it? As and they put a Jolly Rancher in it. Like, your okay. teeth starts... Falling out. Drinking a soda every morning. Nipsey uh, Hustle was oh, on yeah, 97. Said, saw an oh, Power 105. Yeah, exactly. Same yeah, yeah. And he was just like, I'm waking up every morning drinking soda. Right. It's ridiculous. But you're yeah. not thinking of it as such because, you're, right. you know, you're getting high. You got to, you got to, yo, it's so crazy. Like, I was talking to people and they were just like, well, you know, it's hereditary. I said, my, my hereditary history, mm. my father had a stroke when he was in his 50s. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, dude, like my mother has extreme asthma. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I can't fuck with this no, shit. Can't. I can't. can't. I can't. You can't. Like I can't do it. I can't do it. Like I'm just like I stopped drinking a couple of years ago for eight months. I lost forty pounds. Mm -hmm. I was back in the gym, mm -hmm. but you know, working in bars and restaurants it's and tough. all that. It's tough, tough, man. The the temptation that's around you in those right now. I'm I'm, I'm working at my buddy's pizza shop. Oh man, what the fuck you think I'm eating every damn day? Oh yeah, I you know what I mean. Imagine. Beef patties, you know, barbecue chicken pizza, you know, all the calzones I want. I mean, I'm just, you know, starch after starch, you know, right. carb after carb. You know? Yeah, man. So I got to do the same thing. I had to get up on it. Yeah. Um, yo, man, Tuesday night. Yeah. I mean, Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday, you don't even remember what day it was. Yo, dude, Thursday night. Where'd you go? Well, well no, pull up the, uh, uh, pull up the, uh, it should be, uh, let me see. Should be on the shows on the OTV lot. Um, pull up the, um. The gag Thursdays, um, that Thursday night. <laughs> so we were at Gag Thursdays okay. in in Ireland's Thirty Two. I DJ the um, drag show. Mm -hmm. and shout out to them. Shout out, yeah. Shout out to Test Tickles. Shout out to uh, to Rhoda Rolling Stone. Um, and now, first of all, last last Sunday, mm -hmm. I think it was last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday. They had an invasion in the city, and I went to the Stonewall Inn. Like the, an the, invasion? What, was, what do you mean? Well, Russian all or? the Westchester drag queens went to the city and oh. performed. Oh wow! Yo, dude. how many? Like how deep? Like, was like seven, seven oh, okay. deep. Okay, I thought you were gonna say seventy. Oh no, no, there was at least about 70, 80 people there <sighs> from Westchester. Right, it's like boring. fucking cheering on these ladies. Like they were fucking going. In. I can only imagine the the, the I mean because just the support that's in the you know uh, LGBTQ community as a whole is just brother. insane right now. So now, I can only imagine. Well, I told folks you. Wait, going, I think I told you about this one. I took the edible before I went down there and had to leave my car. I had to go back. And yes, go. that's yeah. right. Yeah. So fast forward to Thursday. Yeah. Thursday night. So uh, another one of the the drag queens was celebrating their birthday. He was born on well. He didn't dress in drag, so I can call him Heat. Okay. <laughs> he, <laughs> Funny he, how that his works. birthday, yeah, his birthday was like March first, so we celebrated like the same day. Okay. My dude, I went outside. I burned some of that fucking pre roll. That brute. I will rock. yo, I came back inside, and I had. I, I think I was playing like. Did you think you were in Wakanda? No. <laughs> like I went total like nineteen seventies like, like. Get down on it. Oh, what? Get, yo, dude, we were playing Marvin Gaye. I yeah. played a little Prince. Okay. And I was like, fuck it. I want to get on the microphone. So I did some, I did Marvin Gaye, Let's Get It On. Damn. And this lady was like, ooh, yeah. yeah right, right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, now I'm feeling it. Now, right. I, now I got the confidence. Dude, it turned into like a, a fucking 90-minute concert of just me fucking singing songs. That's awesome. That's yo, fucking awesome. I was, I was, yo, dude. I cried. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, I was yeah. singing songs yeah. that like me and me and Naya fell in love to. Yeah, you, you like, were having I, a moment. Yo, I was like, having a moment. moment. Like, dude, up. I was like, I was like, yo, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this past year was kind of rough. You've been through a lot. You had the the, the stuff during Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot going on. A lot of yeah. stuff. But um, yo, I was a man possessed. I was singing "Stroken" by Clarence Carter. <laughs> Did you do a little dance? Oh, dance, dude. Gay men were running from me because I was a man possessed. <laughs> I swear to God. It was Kevin, but even Burke was like, I'm not fucking with you. Yo, Kevin wasn't even there. Like, he didn't even show up that night. Well, that's because he was probably in some other manhole. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> Yo, dude, I'm talking about I went, I was going in. That's what's up, man. Like, I was dancing my wish, ass off. I wish I was there to, to celebrate with you and experience that, because that is, that is a special moment when, 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 um, you know, when your talent, your timing, and the celebration kind of come right. in. It just comes together. I haven't had at the moment. I haven't had a moment like that since i went to hawaii oh right like okay. i was standing on black sand beach and i yeah. was just like i need more of this in my life like yeah. Yeah. that was just fucking crazy yeah. but let's get to the top 10 yeah. independent albums in the country ladies and gentlemen let's do it. yeah baby all right let's get to this there's nobody watching us right now but that's cool Sorry, they'll, ca they'll catch up. <laughs> they'll catch up they'll catch up okay they'll, they'll watch it again mm -hmm. nobody want to talk about the oscars but i do god damn it um Number 10 this week is Young Dolph, and he's got an EP out, 
surprise EP because Young Dolph just released an album like last year, right? Yeah, like yeah, last yeah, year, yeah. So. Not not even not even a whole year ago. Like, like I think eight months, like eight months ago. <laughs> so. <laughs> The album, the the EP is called "Niggas Get Shot Every Day." Damn, <laughs> <laughs> shit's real. <laughs> Fuck the chase. Let's get to it. Yo, he said niggas get shot every day. So that's Young Dolph. If you don't know Young Dolph, go go listen to that man. Um, the number nine last thing that was number eighteen and back up in the top ten is BTS. Okay, would love yourself her. That is the uh, half Japanese, half Korean boy band. The K-pop group. It's like eight of these little motherfuckers dancing around on stage and shit. Um, love yourself, her. Uh, number eight is somebody that I remember from a long time ago. His name is Michael W. Smith. And his album is called A Million Lights. Now, he is he is like a Christian rock, contemporary Christian. I can feel it with, with the album artwork and the name. Yo, uh... His name, his name is Michael Whitaker Smith. Okay. The dude is 60 years old, and this is his shit. Um, what is it, like 12th album? 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Jesus. 18, 19, 20, 21, 20 second album. And, and, and he had trying- a hit. He had a hit back in like 91. Damn, I'm still trying to learn the harmonica. <laughs> fucking got 20 albums. I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here just trying to learn shit. Yeah, man. Wow. 20, yeah. Well, dude. You know. And I remember, I remember he had a song. I remember he was on tour with Amy Grant. Does anybody, you remember no, Amy Grant? I don't. Amy Grant was like a Christian singer and then she did a pop album. She's, she's married to Vince Gill. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And what was her name again? Amy Grant. Yeah, they had a song from the Speechless soundtrack, which was Gina Davis and and Michael Keaton, um, about speechwriters. Okay, they they fell in love with each other, but they were on opposing sides. Like one worked for a Democrat, one worked for a Republican. Right. And and they had this song called uh, House of Love. And actually, Amy, I think Vince Gill was married or he was separated and they did the song together and then they fell in love. Oh, wow. And then he had a divorce and she got a divorce and then they married each other. They've been married ever since. Like weird fucking like Christian, like Christian mingle type shit. Yeah, right, 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 right. Pl- plenty of uh, Jesus fish. <laughs> you know? Plenty of Jesus fish. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the new website. Plenty of Jesus fish. Dot com. Dot com. You know what? We should buy that. I'm just saying, register now. Register now. Plenty of Jesusfish. dot com. Get a free bottle of wine. Yeah, man. So Michael, I remember he had this song back in the day. I remember, oh man, they used to be like a quasi pseudo Christian, Christian FM station here in New York that used to play. It was near like CD one one hundred one point nine. There's one now. I don't know if, if we're talking about the same one. There's one now. There's one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one now. Oh, Every now shit. and then on a they'll, Sunday, they'll pop up and yeah, be like, and then, they're they're. Hey. No, you know what gets me? I'll hear like I'll hear a pop song, and I'm like, right. all right, it's cool. Let me check it out. Some new shit. Let me learn something. You yeah, know, man. put myself on to something. And all of a sudden, he'll just be like, and then Jesus. I'm like, oh, Is shit. It, yo, dude. But yeah. you know what? You know what's crazy? Like certain stations do like gospel Christian on Sundays. Yes. Like like uh, Hot ninety seven. Hot ninety seven. BLS. Mm-hmm. I remember Kiss used to do it. Ninety eight point seven yep. Kiss FM when Absolutely. they were playing R and B. Like they used to do like. Like you wake up at like ten o'clock on a Sunday, it was just like church on every station. My, my like they aunt, moved away from that now. Right. My aunt had a radio, old school radio, on the floor. As soon as you walk in the house, it's already playing. Right. Right. You know, just stayed on BLS. Oh man. It just stayed on BLS. Yo, what what is it about? Like <laughs> black people. Yo, yo, uh, hold on. Let me. Uh, Let's you talk know about what? It. Let's talk. About yo, hold on. <laughs> when it comes to, I don't know what it is about. I only saw this in black homes. Yes. Especially my friends in the PJs. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to the projects because we talk about Mary J. Blige a little bit later. <laughs> That's right. Yo, what is it about mm. black women that leave BLS on and think that nobody's going to break into your house because the fucking radio is on? Oh, is that why they leave it on? 
blew your shit right now. Damn. <laughs> I, I did not know that. I thought it was just because they wanted, you know, a soundtrack to when they come in the house. No. No. They leave. They used to leave. It's the, like leaving the light on. It's to make people think someone's home. I, right. I hear you. Mm. But somebody going to catch on to that, bro. You, you play. You don't play it when you're home. You only play it when you're not home. The, right. Any self-respecting, smart thief is going to be like, BLS is playing. I'm about to break in this bitch right now. <laughs> I hear Frankie Crocker right now. <laughs> I think I'm like, about to what? go in. This is the quiet storm on WVLS. Crack that shit open now. <laughs> right. <laughs> who, who, was the, who was the light-skinned brother on BET back? Donnie Simpson. Didn't was Ooh, he? <laughs> he was, yo, my dude. Shout out to Donnie Simpson. Absolutely. The green-eyed bandit. That's right. He was the only one. Like, Smooth. I felt, I felt. Uh-huh. I felt like I, I could be him because okay. I had green eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, I used yeah, to yeah. watch it, and he was darker than me. Right. I was like, look at this, this is smooth. Hey, he could do it. I could do like, it. I, he could do it. I could do it. Right. Shit. Yeah, man. So shout out to all the Christian. <laughs> shout out to all the Christian mingle. Oh, oh my man. God, man. Oh man. But something that my that my aunt used to do is, and I wonder if this was other houses too. She would get like a goblet, or sometimes she'd use Tupperware. She put, I think, hot water, maybe cold water, and put a little bit of salt in it. Oh and yeah, what yeah, that would yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be, well, it would well, be the yeah. first, uh, you know, when you put the little pill in the water and it turns into an animal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I remember those. This would turn into some type of fungus white mold that would change colors and grow on the outside of the cups. And for some reason, oh yeah, black church women thought this was art. I don't know what. What I, was that? Yeah, listen, bro. What Let was me tell that? you something. You got me, man. I, yo, listen, when it comes to black Christian women, I don't understand. And you know what? I don't need to because no. they held me down. Absolutely. Of course. If It'd if I was route. somewhere where I wasn't supposed to be, exe- right. ex- expect a phone call going home to your mom. Yeah, absolutely. I saw Derek down on Warburton Avenue. <laughs> you know, he was walking down the street talking to some girl. Be like, yo, you fucking snitch. Snitch! <laughs> Snitch. I see you in church on Sunday, D. This shit is crazy. Mm. Um, so let's get back to what we were talking yes. about. Number seven. seven. Uh, back uh, down one spot from last week, uh, from number six to number seven, is a five finger death punch and uh, a decade of destruction. Good for that. Yeah, man. So let's get into the thicker shits because, yo, dude. There's some really good shit going on right now in the indie, indie charts. We're about to get to it right Let's now. Do it. Number six this week is uh, Super Chunk. Mm, okay. Super Chunk is a band from um, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now, they've been out since 1989. Oh, shit. All right. So there. Yeah. They, 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 it, it's like punk rock influence. Like, it's like indie rock, alt rock, but it's got like a punk edge to it. But they, they, Chapel Hill had their own indie rock scene. Okay. Um, and they founded Merge Records in 89. They've okay. been releasing their own albums since 89 on their own record label. Wow. Um, actually, this is their first album came out in 90. Um, so you got 90, 91, 93, 94, 95, 97, 99, 2001. Then they took a break. Mm-hmm. They came back in 2010. They had an album in 2013, and now they have another one in 2018. So they broke up around, you know, around 2001, and they got back together in 2010. I, I love hearing about bands from, from you know, late 80s, from the 90s. That right. Still and they're still rocking, figuring out still ways going, to, Right. And they don't need to be millionaires. They don't need to be on Billboard. Um, bro, they don't they, need to they, be on, you know, um, the Grammys. They don't need none of that shit. Right. They're you, good. Right. They, they've, been, they've been rocking out for a while. Um... Number five this week surprised the shit out of me is David Cook with Cromance. Now David Cook won the Not seven. Dane Cook. No, no, David Cook. Thank God. David Cook it won the seventh season of American Idol back in two thousand and eight. Okay. Okay. And he had a couple hits. He he he, he was like he was like kind of like Daughtry. Like he has mm-hmm. that 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 ra- gravelly voice, mm-hmm. but now he's he's independent, mm. and now he's doing his thing. And I heard a couple of new songs. It's not really, it's not 
hard. It's not like real hard rock this time. Okay. It's got like a, a very electronic rock feel to it. And it was dope. I was going to say, you could tell, obviously, by the album artwork, he's going for something a, a little softer. I was gonna yeah, say, yeah. I, it I, wasn't, it's not as, it's not as heavy as, as it once was. Right. All right. Um, number Sounds four. Sounds good, though. Oh, man. It was, it was, it was good. Okay. Um, this week, last week, they weren't on the charts, but this band, I'm telling you, this is my pick of the week. We're going to start something, doing something new each week. This is a, my pick of the week. Out of all 10 uh, albums that's out, this one, I, I got to go see these guys live. Who They're is Slaves. Okay. The band is called Slaves, and the new album is called Beautiful Death. Mm. Now, these guys have been out. They just got together in 2014. Okay. New, new group. Yo. I listened to, like, one song, and I'm like, okay. Mm. The lead singer is tattooed on the face. Yeah. He's got the, the eye of Osiris on his neck. Okay, yeah. Like, he's... He's dedicated. <laughs> But the motherfucker can sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind like, of music are we talking? It, it's 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 hard rock, like experimental, like hardcore rock. Mm -hmm. But the dude is like a cross between. All right, remember the singer from a living Co living color? Yeah, uh, Vernon Reed's the, the guitar player. But yes, I know. right. Yeah, you remember him? Yes, I do. Imagine imagine that voice mm -hmm. mixed with Stevie Wonder, mixed with Whoa. fucking yo, dude. His Whoa. tone. It's like the lead singer of Living Color, yeah. like the screaming with with the with the fucking tone of a Stevie Wonder, like the riffs. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 like the kind of it's not new metal. Right, right. But like the kind of feel of early Linkin Park. Wow. I was like, I'm listening to this band. I'm like, yo, I gotta go see these motherfuckers live. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are they do we know where they're from? Yeah, they're from uh Sacramento, California. Okay. Oak Dude. Town. This is my pick of the week. Like, I can't, I can't, like, honestly, like, it surprised the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. Like, their first, uh, the new single that they have is, like, a slow record. And I'm like, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was written well. You know, it's about, you know, I, I don't think it's about a couple of the band members, but a couple of the band members have left. And he's talking about, you know, all the things that he did in his life. Right. And it was, like, kind of reflective. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm already feeling, you know, anyway about yeah. getting older and shit like that. So, <laughs> right, 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 right. so that hit me. But then I listened to their fast stuff. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this dude can sing. He could probably sing R&B if he wanted to. If he wanted to, right. One right. of those. He really could sing anything, but his passion is Right. His that. passion is, is rock. Um, so check out Slaves. And uh, the album is called... Uh, Beautiful Death. Beautiful Death. All right. Um, the next band is, it's not a band. It's its, it's kind of like uh, Afternoon Men. We interviewed the guy that was here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this guy is, is uh, the the band is called Car Seat Headrest. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like bands come up with names and then decide to play music. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? It's like they're all friends. They're hanging out. They're like, that would be a great band name. But we don't have a band. Right. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's so it's called car, car Seat car seat Headrest. And it started out as a solo recording project in 2010 mm -hmm. um, by William James Toledo Barnes. Okay. Yo, he got the craziest you know name. What I'm saying? He's from Leesburg, Virginia. All right. And, um, and it, it, he has band members now. Mm -hmm. But um, they're on Matador Records. They were on Jimmy Fallon last last year, 2017. Okay. I, I, I like him. Yeah. I mean, his voice is not, not for me, but the but the actual music is dope. Right. Um, but I, I really enjoyed their their songs. Kinda dirty. It's not uh, wrong with that. Yeah, man. Shabaya, what's going on? How you feeling, man? What up, Shabaya? Um number two this week is Pop Evil. Pop Evil and their and their album Ooh, the, no artwork. Yeah man. The new album is called Pop Evil. And they've been out uh, let me see. They've been out since oh mm. one. This is another band. Like it was neck and neck for me between um between for the pick of the week, between this band Pop Evil and uh Slaves. Okay. Because Pop Evil is carrying that banner of post grunge like metal rock and the lead singer can sing his 
ass off. I got to check that out after the show. Yeah, man. Um, they're from Michigan. Okay. Uh, the album is called Pop Evil. Check them out. Um, I have, before we get to the first, number one, I got to give, I have to give an honorable mention to a band that was formed last year. Oh, wow. Okay. And they're called Bad Wolves. And uh, 117 Music is an indie indie label. Bad Wolves. They have a remake. They're on tour right now with Five Finger Death Punch, Shine Down, and Star and Star Set um, coming this year. <clears throat> they did a remake of uh, Zombie by the Cranberries. Okay. They called the lead singer of the Zombies mm. to come in and 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 do a duet with them mm. for zombie okay she died before she can get to the studio oh my god they recorded the song and put it out mm. and dedicated all the proceeds to her kids wow that's powerful that's so powerful. go on youtube look up bad wolves zombie in fact don't even watch don't even watch the video buy the single because you're you're you're, you're actually Supporting Dolores or 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 Ryden's kids, because mm -hmm. from what I understand, you know the record company, you know whatever didn't do right by them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from from what I'm hearing, I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna throw their label under the bus. Right, you know what I mean. But when you hear that your lead singer passed away, like at least because they were off the label, they Pay were for off the, the label for for a while. But still, like you Pay know. For the so uh, shout out to Bad Wolves, man. I, I give them. I, I salute you, Bad Wolves, because no, a lot of people don't do that. And now the band was just formed last year, and now that single has over three million views on YouTube. Wow! Man. So wow. you say three million views? You probably say a third of that, or maybe a tenth of that is is being sold. So you're saying about three hundred thousand copies, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. So three hundred thousand copies are going to these kids of uh, the Dolores or, or riding from the Cranberries. So shout out to Bad Wolves. Um, and number one this week is uh, Senses Fail. Now it's so crazy because I know Senses Fail. I think we talked about them on the show before. Have we? Okay. I, maybe maybe it's because I I knew of their artwork. Like their Senses Fail is it's a little. You know, uh, Sugar Skull. Yeah, Sugar Skull. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was their logo. So I think I remember them from that. But they have a brand new album. It's called uh, "If If There Is Light, It Will Find You," mm. and and that's the new album. And it, and it's weird because you got the Sugar Skull and you got somebody holding a little baby. Yeah, you got death holding, holding a, life. Yeah, holding new life. Death nurturing. Yeah. If new, If there is a light, life. it will find you. Isn't that powerful? That I, shit is I crazy, like man. I, I like that a lot. I want to listen. What kind of music is it? Um, they they're they're it's post like, hardcore like it's like three, emo. I was gonna like say three eleven. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, 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 kind of like that. They're from New Jersey, actually. All right. They're from Ridgewood, New Jersey. So shout out to Census Fail. They got the number one album in the country, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the top ten independent albums. Yeah. Uh, week ending uh, March fifth. So there we go. All right. So let's get in the thick of this shit, man. Yeah. Ooh, buddy. I don't even care if anybody's watching because I, ooh. You got, you got some stuff to air out? I got to air some motherfuckers out tonight. Right. Let's do it. This is the platform to do it. Yo, my dude. Let me let me get my Oscar. Uh, let me get my Oscar uh, tally up. Because okay. I, I, I actually, Alamo Draft House had a, had a, uh, a contest. Okay. So they send you the ballot. Yep. You pick who you think is going to win. Yep. And if you get all of them right, they send you tickets or, you know, gotcha. whatever. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. you know, I was on that show. all over. Yeah. I was on it like white on rice. Yes. So um, I'm going to tell you all of the ones that I picked, and we're going to talk about which one that won. Okay. Um, so this is the red. It was the red carpet challenge. Um, we're going to go from the top, and then we're going to go back. Okay. So let me get let me get the... Who won this year? Uh, 90. Let me oh, let me just say this for the record. I think Kimmel should should host every award show. Yo, going forward, he was dope, man. He just seemed he, he's balanced. He's fair. He's not. He's not. He 
his mannerisms aren't over the top. He doesn't feel like he's, you know. Yeah, he's not bigger than, he's just a normal cat. Normal cat. Normal cat. All right, so let's get, let's get down to it. All right, so best picture. I got a, I got my, my favorite sweat, <laughs> sweater on. I'm about to get into this shit. I got to get, you know, get loose. I got to get loose. All right, so best picture. I pick Shape of Water. All right. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's mm. Shape of Water. I saw the film mm. in the theater. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. It was number one on my pick. Yes, right. I remember. For, for last year. I remember. Uh, Call Me By Your Name was nominated. Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. That that Three Billboards was my, my second choice for Best Picture. First off, I fucking love Frances McDermott. Yo. I did not know that was her personality. Yo. I didn't know that's who she was. She's thug, man. She's thug. She's a she's a hooligan. Right. She she she's a gypsy. She she's right. a free spirit. Yo, when she said when she put the Oscar down, she was like, yo, if I pass out, pick me up because I got something to say. Say. Everyone's like, what? She's she was like, Meryl, if you stand up, everybody else will. That's I right. was like, what the fuck? Calling yo. people out. So, Shape of Water. Um, let's go uh best director. Guillermo del Toro, Shape of Water. Mm -hmm. I picked him as well. Okay. So you had Christopher Nolan, Jordan Peele for Get Out, uh, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird, and Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread. Um, actor in a leading role. Now, here we go with the bullshit. <laughs> okay, talk Ooh, to us. Talk buddy. to us, D. But, so oh, wait, you have a call. Do you want to take it? Ooh, let's take it. Right. Let's take the call. Yo, you on the line with OTV Live. Who this? Yo, what up, D? It's Leche. Hey, what's up, man? How you feeling, brother? Good, man. Watching the show. Yeah. Yo, um, I just wanted to say I'm not really a big movie buff. I'm more of a more into music. Right. Music is what kind of captures my uh, my uh, my interest. But I just wanted to say I watch the Oscars, mm -hmm. and I'm so I'm so fucking proud of uh, Jordan Peele, man. Yo, it was so nice to see gonna... him win that Oscar. Yo, and that was dope. Another. I was so happy. That was like probably a highlight for me. Yeah, that was a highlight. We're going to get into that. But also, shout out to all my Mexican-American people, oh, my absolutely. Mexican my absolutely. Mexican brothers and sisters across absolutely. the country, because remember me from Coco, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, won uh, for for best best song, best original song. Also, there was another, uh, there was one, a... Oh, uh, that husband and wife couple. Was yes. It the anim no, it wasn't animation. It was... Uh, I don't know what it was. Yeah, cinematography, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it was cinematography, another Mexican American. And I think he's double EGOT. I saw a headline. Really? That the husband I gotta look it up, but I we think gotta... he's he's the first ever double EGOT person, period. Oh shit. Yeah. Well, yo, Leche, man, thank you for calling in, man. We appreciate it. But um yo Nah man, that movie get out was awesome, bro. No, it was. I, mean, I was so it happy was. for him. It and was that was uh to see like an original idea and like an original film and these eras of like all these remakes and stuff, it was refreshing. Oh yeah, reboots, remakes, and everything in between, man. But um, you know what's crazy about about Get Out? A lot of people said that the fourth act of it didn't really work, and I was just like, I think it had to go that way because if you if you I don't know if you if you guys saw the deleted. I didn't, but I heard. I heard he goes once to ago. Jail. To, yeah, he, uh, he yeah, goes to jail. Yeah. I, I wanted that to be the ending. Really? I wanted the ending to to be really fucking bad. Oh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. you're the only one. Yeah. So, let's <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you for calling in, brother. We're gonna get back to the show, man. Appreciate it, bro. All right, man. Good. It's always talking to you. Good later. All right, man. Peace. But but let me just let me just say this. what I want. The reason I wanted it to be was I wanted it to. I wanted the message to get across to the audiences. This is what motherfuckers are going through. And right. that it, it's not a fairy tale. It's not no, a movie. No. Your boy isn't going to get out the car and save you. Right. This shit ain't going to happen. Right, 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 right. I, I, right. I wanted it to go on that dark turn, but, you know. I mean, well, that's what they, they filmed it. Like, it's yeah. in HD. Like, he filmed it. All right. So, Gary Oldman won for uh, Darkest Hour mm -hmm. as Winter, uh, Winston Churchill. Mm -hmm. I saw the film. He was. He was phenomenal. Excellent. Yeah, I saw. I saw. I saw it today while I was doing show prep. So I saw it kind of in the corner of my eye. But I point parts of it. I was like, "Oh shit, Gary Oldman's a god, right? <laughs> you know, he's Yo, good." I got into an argument with somebody, St Stacy Smith, yet again, because mm. she was supporting Monique through that whole. Still. Listen, listen. 
she was like Denzel Washington got robbed. And I was just like Denzel got robbed for for for, for Malcolm X. No, no, for Roman J. Israel. <laughs> oh, I, know, I know, right, right, right. Did you see that movie? Hell yeah! I didn't. I, I didn't see it. I thought he was great in it. The know. movie wasn't great. All right. It was it was kind of I just felt pokey. it was a, I thought he was I, yo okay he plays the same person he plays himself every movie No this one this one he plays he plays a uh he plays a lawyer who is uh he has Asperger's syndrome Okay and the leader of the partnership died well well had a heart attack or a stroke or something like that okay he cannot go on right so roman has to take the reins as the head of as the head of the business the law firm. but they but the law firm is in the rears okay like they're going on money bank right they're cetera. bankrupt mm -hmm. so he takes it upon himself to go out there but he's never been the out front person he has asperger's right he can he Brilliant in the courtroom. Yo, he's brilliant. Mm. But I don't think this was Denzel's best performance. Training Day was Denzel's best performance. I don't think. Okay, let's let's break it down. Was was Denzel Washington robbed for Malcolm X? Yes, he was. In my personal opinion. Okay. I, <laughs> Do you remember who won? Yes. Who won? Uh, Jack Nicholson for as good as it gets. No, Al Pacino for oh, Sense of, of a Woman. Woman. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. How many times has Al Pacino been passed over for a fucking Oscar? We're talking about he got passed over for The Godfather. The Godfather Part 2. Yeah. He got passed over for Dog Day Afternoon, Serpico, all, and Justice for All, and Glenn Glary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. Glenn, yeah, that's one of my favorite movies of all fucking time. <laughs> and you mean to tell me. That's a good point. Listen. That's a good point. Preach. I'm, I'm Malcolm X. Don't get me wrong. He should have won for Malcolm X. Right. But I understand why they gave it to Al Pacino. I understand. I get it. In fact, Denzel Washington won an Academy Award before Al Pacino. Think about that for a second. I Glory. Oh. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um... It was it was Denzel's time. He was due, just like Al Pacino was due. It's just, I just I guess I don't like the fact that the Academy has to rob Peter to pay pay Paul. Like I just wish people could win it in happens, the time that though. they're supposed to. Win. I know. It I, happens. Happens. I just hope at one point it catches up. I'm just glad Daniel Day Lewis didn't win because every time he's up for a fucking award, oh, he, he wins. wins. I heard that movie was horrible. Uh, Phantom Thread. But it wasn't no, no, I, that's the only one that I haven't seen out of all the out of all the best. Uh, Best picture nominees. I never saw that one. And shout out to Nelson in chat. Yes, and of course he got looked over for Scarface as well. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had that face like you really dissected it. No, he did not deserve an Oscar. He didn't even fucking get nominated for Scarface, I don't think. Every, I mean, it was terrible when it first came. Or it, it got horrible reviews. Yeah, horrible reviews. Yeah. Fran Francis McDormand. Love buddy love love yo, love that she's my spirit out, animal shout out to Frances mcdormand yo she took that stage and made it her own i i, I knew meryl streep wasn't going to win it mm -hmm. the only person that i think that was going to take it was either uh Charos ronan for Lady Bird, okay and margot robbie i tanya i heard it was really 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 oh, good oh shit yeah, 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 yeah i heard it was good yo she was on the level, to me. Yeah, Margot Robbie was on the level with um. What was the girl? You ever seen the movie Monster? See Monsters Ball? No, no. It was a movie called Monster. No. Um. What's her name? One for Best Actress. Okay, hold on. Monster film. But just real quick to go back to what I was talking about earlier, uh, Robert Lopez. Um, he's the first to ever double double EGOT. Um, really? Yeah, Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez, his wife, took home the trophy for the best original song for right. Remember Me for the film Coco. Uh, but the duo's achievement marked an even more remarkable moment in entertainment history. With, an, with his Oscar night prize, Robert Lopez became the first person to EGOT, winning an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and right. Tony twice over. Only, <laughs> there are only 12 people, including Lopez, who have accomplished the feat once. Lopez... Now earned twice. two Oscars, two Emmys, both for daytime programming, Jesus. three Emmys, and three Tonys. What the? By the way, he's only forty-three. And wow! And accomplished his first EGOT by the time he was thirty-nine. 
And he told the kids to go to bed. You could tell by the way he was looking at him and his wife. Like, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. But, I just uh, loved it because they were like real normal people when they went up there. Damn. Um, back to my girl Margot Robbie. Margot. I, I, I felt that her portrayal of Tanya Harding was almost like Charlize, Char, Charlize Theron and Monster. You remember she was the the she played Eileen Werner. I didn't see, I didn't see Monster. Yo, you got to see Monster. Okay. I'm Christina sure. Ricci's in it as well. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Um, best Supporting Actor. I got all these right. <laughs> Did you? Okay. Um, uh, best Supporting Actor. Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I thought Sam Rockwell. There's not many films that you can watch where the antagonist yeah, yeah. makes a complete 180 turn. Mm -hmm. And I believe you. Mm. Yep. Like he was a fucking asshole in this film. Yep. He was a racist, mm -hmm. sexist pig right. in this film. Right. By the end of the film, I was like, okay, I could get a drink with this motherfucker. Right. Like, he did a great job. Um, best Supporting Actress, Allison Janney for I, Tanya. She stole that fucking She played film. the mom. Yes. Shout out to my girl, Mary J. Blige. Yonka's in the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. She looked amazing she last did. night. She did. Amazing. She's finding another gear. Yeah. Another gear. That's that's the whole thing. I, I love following her career and I'm I'm a passive follower of, of, of Mary J. Blige. And it's more just a support of, of just her career. Right. You know, I don't I don't know what her latest song is. Right, I don't right, even right, care. right. I'm you not don't, even nobody, yeah. the biggest But you're a Mary, fan of her. Her. Right. Cause she she just she just keeps it on it the, all the way through her entire life. So you had Allison Janney. Uh, well, going back to best supporting actor, Willem Dafoe, the Florida Project. I heard was great. Mm -hmm. Woody Harrelson, um, Three Billboards. He was really good. Okay. Richard Jenkins, Shape of Water, and Christopher Plummer, All the Money in the World. Um, best actor going. Sorry, going back. I felt that that movie, Good Time. Mm -hmm. Got fucking snubbed. Okay, cause I that kid, yo, that kid mm -hmm. should have gotten a best actor nomination. Wow. Okay, dude, when I tell you this film, like, you gotta, you gotta see this film. All right, I'll check it out. You gotta check it out. He is so dope in this movie, man. Um, let me see, what what's his name again? Uh, Robert Pattinson. He got snubbed. Anyway, going back to Best Supporting Actress, you have Mary J. Blige, Leslie Manfield, Manville, Laurie Metcalf, which was, she was great in Lady Bird. Mm -hmm. uh, Octavia, uh, Octavia Spencer, I knew she wasn't going to win. She, mm -hmm. she didn't have a lot of screen time. Okay. Uh, best Original Screenplay went to Jordan Peele for yeah. Get Out. Yes. Really did not see that coming. I picked three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri to win Best Original Screenplay. You had The Big Sick. Yeah, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water. I looking back at it, he made a horror film seem possible. Like when I watch horror films, I don't think they're possible. I see what you're saying. In reality, you don't it could never happen. It could never happen. It could never happen, right. 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 It's always it's always, that you know, scared girl, me, but I know, but I know day. that there's no dude coming with a hockey mask coming to chop me up. Right. When I go to sleep in my dreams. Right. I'll it, yeah. Freddie ain't coming to get me, right. but this seemed pertinent. It seemed relevant and it seemed like that shit could happen. It was just far right. fetched enough. You know what? You know what kept, you know what kept the screenplay anchored? Mm hmm. And shout out to my man, the one that that was on um, Carmichael show, um, Lil Rel. He kept the movie grounded because that's oh, me. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's that's funny? Us. I thought about you. Yeah, yeah, I thought about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. Yeah. That's the dude on the phone. Like, yo, nigga, I told you not to. Right. Go up. <laughs> I told you not to fuck that way, bitch. <laughs> I told you not to. I told you not to put your dick in. in right. That. Right. I right. told you. Now I gotta come get you. Now I gotta come. Now now I gotta go to the cops. Right. Looking crazy. That's what that's what kept it grounded because they kept on every time it got a little bit crazier and a little bit crazier. They went back to Lil Rel and he's just like, "I got the dog sitting over here." He like, "Yo, what can I do right now?" Putting his TSA thinking cap on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> TS, motherfucking A. That's right. <laughs> Best adapted screenplay was "Call Me by Your Name." I got that one wrong. I thought they were gonna give it to the disaster artist. Now, when it comes to the disaster artist. Mm -hmm. 
I think that kid should have got nominated, man. The one that won, he won the Golden Globe for Best Actor. Okay. But they, they kind of sacked him because of the whole, you know, uh, sexual harassment, you oh, know. Oh, see, that'll do it to you. That'll do I, it to you. In the Academy, and I, I, he was excellent Let, me, let me ask you this about, okay. about, about the voting in the Academy. The, the, the Academy is made up of all the, all the, all the actors and actors. Right. And actors. But there isn't. They're not all sitting together at a table. It's being no, mailed no, they, out to people. Yeah, it, it gets mailed out to people individually. Right. They anonymous. have screen. They have screeners. Right. They, they send it out to people. Right. The academy is is uh, the academy is the actors, producers, directors. Um, there are some people. There are some people that are reviewers, and you know, if they're in, well, not SAG, but. Excuse me. If they're part of the Academy Award uh, Association, then they get to vote. Right. So I think they kind of sacked my man. I, I mean, the, the Disaster Artist was really funny. Okay. Really good. Okay. Um, Logan, I knew Logan wasn't going to win. I think it's too early for a... Marvel. Uh, well, not Marvel. Comic a, book movie. A comic book movie to win an Oscar just yet. Give it a couple years. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for well, sure. Black Panther is. Black Panther is going to win. <laughs> That's gonna it's going to win for costume design. It's going to win. Yeah. Mark my words, people. It's going to win for cinematography, mm -hmm. costume. De well, not cinematography. Costume design and special effects. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to happen. All right. Best picture? Not best picture. It's going to get nominated. Okay. Best picture is up for 10. Is up, up to 10 now. You have 10. Is there a limit? No, there's 10. It used to be five. Okay. Now you have 10. All right, so best animated feature went to Coco, and hands down, come on, it, it was, it, it, come on. Yeah. You had the Boss Baby, no. No. The Breadwinner, no. No. Ferdinand, hell no. No. Loving Vincent, I don't even know what that is. Me either. Uh, best foreign language film, okay. I got it right. Oh. It was Spanish. It was a fantastic woman from Chile. I got to see Where'd this you film. Where'd you meet her? <laughs> <laughs> I want one. Yo. I watched this film, and you know I don't watch films with with you know subtitles. The subtitles. Well, Crouching Tiger, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I went to see it in the movie that everybody hated it, but I loved it. Yeah, like, I was, yeah, I remember that hate. Yeah, everybody was like, "Oh, it was boring." I'm like, "Yo, dude, it's a a Chinese." Anyway, we're going on, <laughs> moving on. Best documentary feature. I lost this one. I thought Strong Island was going to take it. You got to see Strong Island, Icarus. Um, actually won for best documentary feature. Okay. But Strong Island... Keep it going. I got to get our boy Krynas. Yeah, yeah, no problem. But um, uh, Strong Island was an amazing documentary. You got to check it out. Um, best documentary short, Heaven is a Traffic Jam on the 405. You can all watch these online, actually. Um, just take a little time to uh, check it out. Um, I thought Edith and Eddie was actually going to win best documentary short about two... Um, interracial, uh, retired, you know, older people that are separated by by really messed up circumstances. So check that out. I actually picked Heroin, about the heroin epidemic, as the best documentary short, but it lost. Um, best live action film short was The Silent Child. I didn't get to see any of the uh, best live action short films, so I can't really speak on it. Now, I got to wait for Gypsy to get back. I think uh, his guest is here. Make sure you check out uh, The Hangover Takeover, which will be coming on at 9.30 on Facebook Live. Um, I'll even put up a link for you if you if you like. Um, let's see who's in the chat room right now, Who who's who's talking up a storm. Let's see, because I got I to gotta talk about this when it comes to the best animated short right now. Damn. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got to wait for Gypsy to get back. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Chris Weaver. Uh, shout out to James Nelson. Crazy. Um, shout out to Leche. Jokima, what's going on? Gary, what's going on? Um, if you want to call in, we only got a few. We got about like 10, 15 minutes left. So call in and let me know uh, what you felt about the Oscars. Actually, the Oscars, this is the one. This might be the lowest watch Oscars in, in in Academy Awards history, which is which is weird as hell. Like I thought the telecast last night was really dope. Um Gypsy's back, so we're gonna talk about this right now. So best animated short went to Deer Basketball, Glenn Keane and Kobe Bryant. Kobe. 
Kobe Bean Bryant. The backlash <laughs> for Kobe Bryant winning an Oscar last night yeah. is unfounded, unnecessary, and just fucking but rude. But do you think that Come on, he man. got it because he's Kobe? No. I, I felt I, I got to watch Dear Basketball, and it's a love letter to what he loves. Like, you can't get past that. So Kobe Bryant won, and the backlash, oh, he was he was uh, uh, accused of rape back in 2003. But, oh, yeah. And I'm just like, you're bringing, <laughs> you're bringing this up. I said Please. the case was dropped. Right. Not only that, Kobe has won, like, four championships since then. He's been on... Charlemagne broke it down today on The Breakfast Club. Mm. I didn't hear anybody going, oh, he shouldn't be on the front of NBA 2K. Right. No, nobody, nobody said anything when he was out there dribbling the basketball. You want to know why? Because he's a black man yeah. making money for a bunch of fucking non-black people. They're going to keep you in rotation. They will. But but Kobe knows how to play the game. I mean, Kobe's no oh, idiot. As much as people love to say, you know, they allowed him, right. he's very fucking smart. And going yeah. back to your point, legally the case was dropped, and I and I posted on that on that post that you're right. you're speaking of that there are about eight specimens of DNA right. in that in that, in that woman, draws right. Game. Like, how so, is that possible? And this was way before any any type of, you know, Me Too movement. Even though you know the, the, this movement, y'all going pulling. in on this man yeah. like. So what happened? So you haven't been convicted of anything. The woman didn't come in and say, and didn't testify. Right. Like it's done. It's over. You gave a fucking Oscar to to what? what what's this dude's name? Um, the guy that that raped little girls, and he as soon as he was about to be sentenced, he flew to fucking France. The Weinstein? No, 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 no. There's a there's a director. He won best director. Oh, I don't know. Right. Exactly. So this is what we're talking about. <laughs> oh. So to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, best original score went to Shape of Water, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. uh, best original song, Remember Me. We talked about uh, Robert Lopez and his wife, Christian. Oh, his girlfriend or wife? wife, I don't know. wife. His wife. Mm -hmm. Mighty River from Mudbone was, uh, was nominated. Mystery of Love, Call Me By Your Name, Stand Up For Something. And This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. I thought This Is Me was going to take it. Okay. Uh, the Greatest Showman... May not be a great film, but the music was crazy. It's a musical, and and it looked like they took the time and the care yeah, man. for that production to do it right. Right, so right, I right. Feel, I feel like it, it probably should have won. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, best production design went to Shape of Water. Okay. Best cinematography went to Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and Roger Deakins. Roger oh. Deakins has been. <laughs> Yo, that dude! I know exactly. He looked like he he was he he played for the Rolling Stones. Yo, Roger Deakins. <laughs> God bless that man. Roger Deakins has is sixty eight years old, and this is his first Oscar. He was the cinematographer for the Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Fargo, mm. A Beautiful Mind, mm. okay. Skyfall, Yep, Sicario. Okay. He's been old. He looked at like Academy he, Award. He, Did you see him when he walked up? He was like, bro. "Yo, he was like this. He was like, <laughs> bro. He looked like he had about four or five pints before he went Yo, up there." Yo, dude, he was like, uh, he was like, "What am I doing over here?" Yo, I, yo, shout out to Roger Deakins, man. Shout out to Roger Deakins. Um, let's go. Keep going. Uh, best makeup and hairstyling. Darkest hour. Come on, you can't get absolutely. <laughs> Let me yo, you get they transform and they yo. They were going. They were. Nobody said anything about about uh, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman beat up his wife in front of his kids. When <laughs> years ago, oh, but nobody bring that up. But you want to bring up Kobe anyway. And, and and by the way, Sean Connery did say, you know, sometimes a woman does deserve a good open handed slap. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> to Barbara Walters, I think. Yo. Best costume design, Phantom Thread. The costumes in it, I didn't see it, but just looking at the film, it was great. Mm -hmm. Best film editing, I knew Dunkirk was going to take it. Mm -hmm. Dunkirk was a big... Uh, did you get to see that in IMAX? I saw... No, I, I did not. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. don't see that high, I'll tell you that. Right, you think you're in the fucking world. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
I was sitting in the theater like, I'm going to have to walk out. Right. <laughs> anyway, much, right. Uh, best visual effects went to Blade Runner 2049, okay. which, I, uh, which I absolutely loved. The, 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 film, the film fell short just like the original Blade Runner did. Blade right. Runner didn't do well in theaters. Right. It's a cult film. It's a cult classic. Yeah, you can't bring back cults. Well, no, they brought it back, but I thought it was great. All right. We, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. And that is my man, Ryan Seacrest. Ooh. All right. Talk about it. Ryan Seacrest has just been accused of sexual misconduct against his is he gay? hairstyle. No, he's, he's straight. Okay. I know. No, I, I'm, then, not, I don't, yeah. I'm not saying he, I don't even think he comes off as gay, but I just thought he. He's just too put together. He's too he, metrosexual. Yeah. The man's too perfect. No straight man is that fucking perfect. No, but he's. That not, no, no, hold business. on, hold on. That motherfucker's short. Because I did one of his TV shows. No, I didn't say anything about his height. I'm just saying, no, that's well, organized. Okay. Gotcha. I'm being funny, but I'm just saying. Ryan Seacrest did the E uh, red carpet last night. He'd been doing the E red carpet for years. Okay. Yeah. Only <laughs> out of all the major awards, mm. out of like 16 people that were nominated, only like two or three of them talked to him. Like oh. everybody else just. But what weren't these the, allegations? They, they're brand new. They just came out like maybe like a month ago. So he's got caught up in the Me Too, Time's Up movement. And, uh, not but, Ryan Seacrest. But man. the whole thing is, uh, like, don't get me wrong. I am not. I am not blaming victims, but one person out of hundreds of thousands of people you work with, yeah, come out and say that you did that. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you did it or you didn't do it. Right. But normally, you see, there's a pattern with that kind of behavior. Right. Because you're a degenerate and you can't. Right. You have and no you can't control. Contr right. You can't control yourself. I hear you. Yeah. But you know, I've done I've done shit like that before. People I've worked with, I've slapped a couple butts. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've I've hugged a couple girls a little bit too a long. Longer one, two seconds. You know longer. What I'm saying? Yeah, I, I've been there too, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I did do. that. You I know do. what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't flirted with people when I thought that there was a mutual attraction, and of she course. was like, "We all have." D, I, I wasn't feeling you like that, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. sorry." Yeah. But you know, you take it like, and you move on, and you move on. You take the L and move. Sounds like that's what Ryan did. Apparently, this this girl did. I don't know, man. But <laughs> it, yo, Kelly Ripper is supporting him. Not only that, uh, what's what's my girl's name? Oh my god, from Empire. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Taraji. Yeah, she's supporting him too. Right. Because they were trying to throw her under the bus, saying that she was throwing shade at the red carpet, and she was like, "Nah, I support him." Right. Like so. what? Well, she's the only. There was Allison Janney, mm -hmm. uh, Taraji P. Henson, and a couple of other people yeah. only talked to him. Like everybody else didn't talk to him. Well, that's because the publicists and the fucking your 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 uh, your your managers mm -hmm. and all that they don't want you being synonymous, associated, yeah, associated, no association. at, at at all right. with somebody that's been uh, you know what I'm saying, even accused, accused of, yeah. yeah, even accused of it. Right. Um, this show is sponsored by my peoples at Koi Creative Space. Koi. Shout out to Manir. Manir. Manir and Ryan, man. Yo, check out Koi Creative Space. It is in the heart of White Plains, New York. Koi Creative Space is located at 169 Marinica Avenue on the second floor, right above Lily's. The phone number is 914-428-3195. Go to Koi. That's K O I creativespace.com and mention OTV live and you'll get 20% off of your membership. Nice. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Koi is doing a lot of good stuff. I got to DJ the nineties hip hop yoga party. Oh, dope. And I was like, damn, I said, this could be something big. Like yeah. this could, yeah, man. So make sure you go to Koi creative space. Uh, once again, it's uh it's a space that if you need to you know a need a space away from home the kids are bothering you you need to write a script 
You know what I mean? You need to do you gotta homework. Write that screenplay. You got to write that screenplay. Twenty times. You got a you got a, a a report that needs to be due on Monday and it's Thursday, and you know you got crazy stuff to do. Check out Koi Creative Space, ladies and gentlemen. So this has been our Oscars, our 90th Academy Awards review show. Yes. Um, please leave comments. The 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 um the show will be up on YouTube by tomorrow. We've been trying.